just a quick question before we begin. How many people here are using GDAD? Cool. Uh, how many people here uh, are using Valera? Using some kind of uh, discovery service for the market, like uh, kind of console, computer, Source project. Uh, I've been working on it previous previous company, and this is my third company working on that uh, same project. So uh, I just want to acknowledge Alfred and Booking.com and now Gita for uh, letting me letting me work on an open source project throughout you know, different companies and free source resources. Um, what I want to discuss is uh, how orchestrator treats. Failure scenarios, how it detects a master failure or any other sort of failure, why I think it does that in a more reliable way. I don't just think that, I hope so. Um, and why it does promotions and recoveries in a much smarter way than what we have today. Also. So, orchestrator. Uh, how many of you have never heard of Orchestrator before? Okay, cool. So Orchestrator is a, is a tool that crawls through your MySQL topologies, through your replication tool. It pokes the master, shows, shows play hosts, uh, it pokes the replicas, shows uh, the status, it figures out what's connected where, and it builds internally uh, the topology tree and understands uh, replication and understands what's connected to what and how things should behave. So um, let's let's talk generally. Uh, we have a replication tree, and what could possibly go wrong? How do I know that something did in fact go wrong? How do? <coughs> uh, how do you even know that your master has crashed? Right? So the common solution to this is to use a ideas like poking at the master, right? You port scan, or you actually connect to the server and you should select one. Or maybe you actually uh, update some rows uh, to see that the master is responsive. And uh, if you're using that and something fails, if you're only poking the master and something fails, how do you know that the master is indeed dead or Maybe you have a problem. Maybe your monitoring site has a problem, right? So you're not sure, right? You're afraid of false positive. You, you don't auto promote masters just like that. And you try again, and again, and again. And so like, that's like the classic nuggets stuff, right? You wait like four times, four successive times, and yes. Okay, by now I'm really sure there's a master failure. And I do a promotion. So how many false negatives or false positives do you get from that? And how much time have you wasted in figuring out that the master is indeed dead? So Orchestrator takes a completely different approach. Uh, and I argue that it is very safe, very reliable, and much faster. So Orchestrator crawls through a closure, right? And it knows beforehand who is the master and who are the replicants. And what replicants from where? And how many slaves there were before the crash, and how many slaves were running and talking to the master just before the crash. So at the time of the crash, orchestrator doesn't just observe the master, it also observes <coughs> all the replicas, all the slaves everywhere around the topology. And he checks each and every one of them. And he says, Well, what do you think? And he's not it's not just issuing a select one or something like that. It's actually connecting to those replicas and saying, show slave status. What do you think? Show slave status. What do you think? 
Trust your cells, what do you think? Moreover, this is not limited to a master-only problem, right? Uh, earlier on, Rene from Boom Dropbox uh, presented that they have uh, a master in one DSC, a bunch of replicas, a local master or an intermediate master in another DSC, relay a reputation to get other replicas. So what happens if that one goes down? How, how, do, you, how do you monitor that? How, how, how do you know that something went wrong? So in exact same way, Orchestrator monitors not only that server, but all these replicas. And it's asking everyone, everyone, what, what, what do you think about the situation? I, I don't know what I think, but what do you think? So here's a few uh, scenarios. I'm going to walk through a few crash scenarios. Uh, and I'll explain how Orchestrator figures them out, and which is the, the correct uh, conclusion. So say a dead intermediate master, what does that mean? It means Orchestrator cannot connect to that server, but that in itself uh, is unreliable because maybe I have a connectivity problem. But Orchestrator is able to connect to those three replicas and is able to issue show slave status on those servers. And each and every one of those servers is saying, yeah, I can talk to the master. Something's going terribly wrong. Well, that, that's like, that's, I call this right, the, the holistic approach, right? You get a full picture, like, everybody is in agreement that something is terribly, terribly wrong. And you don't need to wait <coughs> for four minutes or like, again and again and again and again. If everybody is saying, yeah, we cannot replicate, an orchestrator cannot sit, De facto, there is no replication, right? De facto, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe that server thinks it's alive and replicating well, but no one acknowledges that, and everybody else suffers, hence a failure, right? This is a crash case. Um, uh, just the same way, I cannot talk to the master, but I can talk to all of its direct replicas, and they're all saying, yeah, uh, we cannot talk to the master. So that, that's the holistic approach. I get the full picture for anyone. And I don't need to wait for uh, uh, many cycles because as soon as I actually suspect, as soon as, as soon as orchestrator suspects that there is a problem, like it cannot reach the master, or a first tier slave says, I think I'm having issues with the master, orchestrator <laughs> immediately just goes everywhere and says, whoa, 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 whoa I think there's a panic scenario. What do you think? Right? So it doesn't need to wait for like the next cycle or anything. Whenever there's a hint of a real problem, a real danger, it just goes everywhere, all over the place, and ask everyone, well, what do you think? And with the proper settings for, uh, for replicas, you can have <coughs> like uh, as small as five or 10 seconds until a replica actually figures out, yeah, the muscle is broken or I can't do it. Uh, things get more complicated when actually I cannot reach all of the replicas. What if I can't reach that one? Is it a correct conclusion to say that the master is dead? Maybe those two are broken, but the master is alive and I cannot, I have a network problem talking to it. And that slave is also alive and I have a network problem talking to it and they're both actually happily uh, uh, replicated. So uh, it, it's, it's a matter of how many versus Right? What makes sense? So uh, what Orchestra tries to do is figure out a natural human response. If I, as a human being, would see that situation, I would say, yeah, well, those two do say that they have a problem, and there's no replication running anyway. So maybe those two live happily together, but I don't think so. It is, this is like way too dangerous for me. So that, that's, that's a conclusion Orchestra makes. Uh, another thing I'm working on it right now is what happens if the master is deadlocked, right? We do an alpha table or some trigger or whatever, right? <coughs> I'm unable to write to the master. It's not processing anything because of some crazy <coughs> lock. The slaves are connected, right? But they're not getting anything through from the master. So they're all stale, right? They're not advancing in binary logs not advancing in replication. This is something we're sort of monitor today. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm working right now to, to make that a potential failure scenario. We might choose to fail the master because of that. 
right? We did a terrible out of table. If we try to roll back that out of table, it could take, it could just as well take five more hours to roll back that thing. So we may just as well promote the last thing. Oh, so I, I claim that this is a very reliable <coughs> analysis. Um, this is used uh, widely in production at my previous company, Booking.com. I don't work there anymore, so I'm not able to share numbers. Maybe my esteemed colleagues who sit in the crowd can share some later on. But this was like very, very, very accurate, right? When something went down, you would get a note from Orchestrator. You would get it minutes before Nagios would even alert you. Know, and you wouldn't get those events. So I, I can't say, you know, there's no five nine four nine that I can say how much accuracy, because we don't have those numbers of production uh, failures, thankfully. But it was very, 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 very accurate uh, to the point of I really believe what it was fixed. Okay, so we detected a failure. We came to the conclusion that we want to promote a new master. Let's talk about master, right? The master is there, and we want to promote a new one. Who do we promote, and how do we do it? Is any of the replicas a valid candidate? Can we promote anyone we like? Well, not really. So uh, this is the classic case, right? Replication is asynchronous. Uh, I'm not talking about Galera, but most of this actually applies to Galera as well, as long as you have multi-DC replication, because uh, even with the Galera setup, you would have local Galera master on a remote DC, so you, you never get away from the um, So this is a typical scenario. <coughs> the master dies. It has three replicas. Replication is asynchronous, so not all replicas are exactly up to date at the time of the crash. And you have one that is most up to date, one that is less so, and one that is configured to lag by 24 hours for purposes of hackers and you know mistakes we do and we need to, to pull out some data. Um, so you typically want to promote the one that is most up to date because that one has all the relevant data as compared to others and then put those two behind that one. Okay so far? Cool. So that's the naive assumption. However, reality shows us that this doesn't play nicely. Uh, I might have two slaves configured with log slave updates and another machine, which means I'm further writing the binary logs uh, for future generations, and one without. Maybe it's, it's a slower machine, maybe it's on Amazon, it, it, you know, it can perform too well, or whatever. And I just cannot, I must not promote that one on top of those two, because that one doesn't have the necessary binary logs. Even if it's more up to date than those other two. What happens if I have multiple DCs? I really, really, really want to promote one of these because it's in the same DC, right? Promoting a slave from another DC, uh, it's, it's a bit more dangerous. I have, let's say I have statement-based replication and I want to evaluate probe-based replication, right? So we're getting into the world of real life. In real life, our system is dynamic, our state is dynamic. We're upgrading and rechecking new version and new configuration and we don't necessarily have all things equal. So I would have one slave with row-based replication in the uh, intention of at some time migrating from SBR to RBR. We must not promote that one because it just doesn't work. You cannot make SBR replicas from RBR. More limitations. I'm checking on 5.7. I must not promote that one because I cannot or shouldn't make it to a workplace. It's very dangerous to replicate from 5.7 to 5.6. So, what happens if we have multiple problems, right? This one is the most up to date, but in the wrong DC. This is less up to date in the right DC. This has no binary only in, in the right DC. And Orchestra actually figures all this out and tries to give you the best solution under the circumstances. So in this particular case, if all these slaves, like if these two have binary logs, fine. Orchestra will promote, uh, most of the will promote that one, putting those two behind, and then let them catch up 
and then reverse the replication again. So it will do what you would do as a human being to make the best out of a situation, right? You really want that thing, but you have to go around to make that happen. And I'm still working on, you know, if you take all the other conditions like RBR and SBR and 57 and 56 and 55 and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that's like really, really complicated. So I'm still working on, you know, making the best of the situation, uh, combining all the potential uh, problems. So what orchestrator further supports is that it doesn't care about the particulars of your setup. Right. Uh, while I developed orchestrator in a particular company, I also uh, worked on it to be the general purpose solution. Right. And it will support GD80 and Super GD80, which is uh, something that orchestrator does as well. And it supports uh, 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 MySQL uh, Bing of servers, uh, developed in Booking.com. And it supports role-based application <laughs> and statement-based application and Oracle, and MariaDB, and any combination that you might think of for all this, because it's really uh, being built in production on many, many different environments. It, it actually supports all of them. Um, uh, you can ask it not to promote a specific server, if you like. Uh, and this is uh, moving from configuration-based to state-based. Uh, you can ask for a particular server to be promoted, if possible. And I'm working on more elaborate uh, definition of what you would, may want to promote in case of failure. Um, there's anti-flapping in acknowledger. Uh, so you promoted a new master, and then you think it dies as well. Do you just keep on automated recovery until you've exhausted all your servers? Maybe there's a colossal problem to your system. Right? And you don't want to get into this rabbit hole of don't fall into this black hole, eventually you're going to run out of service. So there's, there's a flapping, an anti-flapping mechanism, which says, all right, that there has to be a minimal amount of time be between any two failovers on the same topology, <coughs> or at least have a human acknowledge and say, okay, I'm, I'm marking this is okay, and we can, we can go back resuming uh, automated, automated uh, recovery. Um, so, uh, just to put uh, perspective into limitations, um, the one thing that our story does not give you today, and I'm working on that to some extent, because every company has its own setup, right? How do you detect the master? <coughs> you have console, you have agent proxy, you have puppet, you have, right? Orchestra cannot know, cannot possibly know what you have. And so the final step, when, when orchestra needs to fix a topology, it will heal the MySQL cluster itself, but to promote a server to be master makes a DNS change in your case, uh, a VIP change in your case, uh, right? a Zookeeper update in your case, and it never ends. So it relies on your external hooks to make the final change. It will tell you, it will give you all the data you need. I promoted this or this, and yada, 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 yada. But you would need to write the final step of actually making the change. And we're thinking about uh, something would be uh, even more in the control of the orchestra. Uh, it doesn't support multi-source, it doesn't support the very this time. Uh, these are basically the high, high, uh, high level uh, limitations. Uh, just a few words about existing MySQL specific solutions. So um, when I say existing MySQL specific solutions, those solutions that you know, think about MySQL and promoting slaves, etc. Um, most of them today are configuration based. So you specify beforehand the list of servers you would want to have in that setup. Uh, this is like operations unfriendly to the extent that I cannot stress enough, right? Because you're adding servers and dropping servers and you cannot just go to configuration and, and type everything and deploy and hope that by the time this is deployed, everything's fine. You, you think it's, I think it's the wrong way to do it. That's my opinion. Um, uh, many of them assume a specific topology type. Like you would have a master master and you can only fail to that stand by master, but you cannot promote anything else. I don't like that as well, personally. I just like, you know, that's my topology, make the best of the situation. Um, 
some solutions just assume that everything is Oracle MySQL or everything is MariaDB, right? But, but, but in reality, it's just it's, it's unfair to expect a specific setup where all servers are equal. If you're all in the same version and every, you know, the sun is shining and everyone is happy, that's not how we work, right? We upgrade, we, we change stuff. We want our system, our recoveries to be dynamic and adapting to our uh, existing setup. Um, I don't know of an existing MySQL solution that cares about intermediate master. Uh, it's always about the master recovery, never about intermediate master. I think it's a big, big, big issue. Intermediate master is all over the place. Raise your hand if you have an intermediate master in a second DC. So, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Pat yourself in the back. Because it's, it's a sensible way to go. None of the solutions I know have strict anti-flapping mechanism. Well, one of them has. I don't want to throw names around. And I love everyone. Uh, I'm not saying it's orchestra is better than anything, but it's doing very, very well. Uh, one uh, last thing to note is orchestra itself is highly available. That is, it's not the single point of failure. Orchestra itself has a multiple service uh, uh, layout where one of the orchestra services go da goes down, another comes up and continues from whenever the last one failed. Even if the, la the, the failed one was in the middle of the recovery process and then broke, the next one will just say, oh, okay, forget it, I'm going to figure out everything again because that's what I know how to do. I figure out stuff dynamically, so I'm just going to refigure out everything and do my thing. Um, orchestra relies on my scale backend and our Three solutions to that, uh, to have the MySQL backend for Orchestra is highly available. You can either use Galera for Orchestra or MySQL Plus for Orchestra. I'm working on a solution that would actually allow you a, a normal master master configuration uh, kind of availability. And there is some talk by other people, by third parties, to replace that with also in the PC. But I don't know if that would happen. Um, so uh, I'm aiming to between 10 and 20 and up to 30 seconds, complete recovery in the case of a real master failure without false positives as much as possible, and certainly without any uh, false negatives. That's, that's the purpose, and uh, I've made uh, a lot of advancement. Um, do I have a short minute? Yeah? Yes, a short sure. minute. Uh, Rene was uh, speaking here before about GDIDs, and the time it takes for a, uh, a slave to reconnect to a master, and, how it might take like up to two minutes to just search for the GDID entry in the master because you need to scan the binary log, which is uh, one gigabyte long. And uh, we've actually made a very nice progress on that. We like, uh, Orchestra is like indexing the binary logs as it goes along. And at the time of crash, it just remembers and it says, yeah, you know what? I don't need to, s to scan the entire binary log. I can just scan, you know, the last minute of the binary log, you know, the last entries, because that's where the crash is likely to have happened. If it's not there, I'm going to risk an error. So I've like reduced the recovery time by like 30 seconds, which is a lot, a lot of time. Um, questions? Quick. Yes. Short comment. Um, yeah. <laughs> to implement multi-source. Yeah. I might go for Galera. I'm very much open to uh, pull requests. I just moved into GitHub a couple months ago, so I'm a bit slow right now to accept to a pull request. I need to you know, figure myself out again, so I'm a bit slow right now. Uh, there have been pull requests. Uh, um, Square are uh, major contrib contributors to Oxford, and it's working well, so I'm, I'm happy to which is very known to work in production. Of course, the booking.com and Outran, and GitHub, and Square, GoDaddy, Box, SendGrid, uh, a few others, big names that I forget, it's just production. Yeah, let's take this offline. Uh, we'll possibly be able to talk about that. Dinner. Dinner, dinner tonight. My scale and friends, community dinner. Did you register already? You pay 20 euros and then you're forced to eat croquettes. <laughs> croquettes. That's what friends want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.